In the heart of Montana, beneath a rock cliff, a chance discovery in 1968 would rewrite our understanding of one of the first peoples to call the Americas home. A small skeleton, buried with care and reverence, surrounded by ancient tools and covered in red ochre, emerged from the earth. This was no ordinary find. It was, and remains, the only known human remains from the Clovis culture, one of the earliest and most iconic prehistoric societies in North America. The remains belong to a boy who lived 12,600 years ago. He is known as Anzic I, and his DNA remains the only genome ever recovered from a Clovis individual, and one of the oldest full human genomes from ancient Americans. The Clovis culture, named after the Blackwater Draw near Clovis, New Mexico, where their signature tools were first unearthed in the 1920s and 30s, had long stood as a symbol of humanity's first great foothold in the Americas. Their artifacts are these iconic fluted spear points, chipped from stone with exquisite precision. These artifacts date back to between 13,000 and 12,600 years ago, making them the oldest widespread toolkits in North America. These tools were designed to pierce the thick hides of megafauna. Over 10,000 such points have been found scattered across the continent from the Atlantic seaboard to the Pacific, often clustered near ancient kill sites where the bones of mammoths and mastodons lie in tangled heaps. But the Clovis weren't just fighting the massive beasts of the wild. They were battling something far more threatening, an extinction period. The end of the Pleistocene brought the Big Freeze, a sudden chill around 12,900 years ago that lasted centuries, plunging temperatures and dooming the great beasts they hunted. As mammoths died out and bison herds dwindled, the Clovis adapted, or vanished. Their tools are what remained of their age, but the actual human remains of the Clovis were hard to come by. For decades, archaeologists clung to the Clovis first dogma, that these were the very first pioneers crossing from Siberia via the Bering Land Bridge around 15,000 years ago, fanning out to populate two continents. But cracks in that story were forming. Fast forward to 1968, in the ranch lands of Wilsall, Montana. The Enzik family had granted permission for a gravel pit to be dug near a rocky cliff. What started as routine construction unearthed something profound. Fragments of human bone scattered amid a trove of stone tools. Two construction workers stumbled upon the remains of not one, but two individuals named Anzik I and Anzik II after the family. Though only Anzik I would steal the spotlight, while the second, Anzik II, proved too fragmented for meaningful study. The site, now known as Anzik, became the only known Clovis burial in the Americas. The bones, small, fragile, coated in a rusty red pigment known as ochre, were carefully gathered, along with about 125 artifacts. Due to restrictions, few images of the human bones remain in the public domain, and those that do are obscure. The infant, dubbed Anzik I, was no older than 18 months when he died, his tiny skeleton incomplete but good enough for conducting studies. Radiocarbon dating would pin his burial to 12,600 years ago, right at the Clovis era's twilight. His cause of death is a mystery, but his people didn't abandon him. They wrapped him in hides, dusted him with red ochre, a mineral pigment, and laid him to rest beneath their tools. For decades, the Anzic remains were in storage at Texas A and M University, studied sporadically through anthropology and dating. But in the 2010s, a revolution in ancient DNA, fueled by next-generation sequencing, presented a new chance to study these old bones. Enter researchers from Texas A and M and Montana State University, teaming with Sarah Anzic, part of the Anzic family, just a child of five during the discovery, who would later become a molecular biologist. They embarked on a quest to sequence Anzic One's full genetic code. It wasn't easy. The bones had endured Montana's brutal freeze and thaw cycles for thousands of years, leaving the DNA fragmented. Authenticity tests proved that DNA was truly ancient. Scientists saw clear signs of cytosine deamination, a kind of chemical damage that happens when DNA ages. Through incredible precision and persistence, they finally managed it, one of the first complete genome sequences of an ancient North American. The results were groundbreaking. Anzic One's mitochondrial DNA, passed from mother to child, belonged to haplogroup D4H3A, a rare lineage common among some Native American groups along the Pacific coast today. But here it was, inland in Montana, which challenged ideas of coastal-only migrations. His Y chromosome, the paternal thread, was QL54, a founding lineage for American men, diverging from its Asian cousins around 16,900 years ago. Statistical analyses backed this up, using a method called outgroup F3 statistics, a mathematical way of measuring shared ancestry by comparing how much genetic history two groups share with a distant outgroup, scientists found that Anzic I 
shared more genetic drift with 52 Native American populations. But the most profound answers lay in the full genome, the complete set of 3 billion DNA letters. The results showed that he is a direct ancestor to many, possibly up to 80% of today's Native Americans, especially those in Central and South America, like the Caratiana Brazil or Maya descendants. That leaves about 20% unlinked through this lineage, hinting at the possibility of another unaccounted for group or wave of ancient people, perhaps from those deeper northern divergences or later arrivals. The ANZIC genome also revealed an unexpected genetic split among Native American populations that began before the Clovis era. Most Central and South American groups like the Caritiana of Brazil and the Maya share a close genetic link with ANZIC-1, while Northern populations such as the Cree, Ojibwa, and Algonquin trace to a slightly different lineage. This suggests their ancestors diverged from the ANZIC line earlier than 12,600 years ago. The genetic findings also shed light on one of archaeology's longest standing debates, the origins of the Clovis people. For years, two competing theories dominated the discussion. The prevailing view held that the Clovis people descended from Asian populations who crossed the Bering Land Bridge around 15,000 to 14,000 years ago. But a controversial idea, known as the Solutrean Hypothesis, suggested that Clovis ancestors might have come from southwestern Europe crossing the Atlantic during the last glacial maximum between 21,000 and 17,000 years ago. By comparing ANZIC 1's DNA to modern and ancient populations, researchers found no evidence to support the Solitrean hypothesis, as there was no European affinity. Instead, the boy's genome showed a clear connection to Siberian populations, particularly a 24,000-year-old individual from Malta in Siberia. This confirmed that the Clovis people descended from Asian ancestors who migrated to the Americas long before the Clovis era began. However, this does not necessarily mean that the first Americans came exclusively through the Bering Land Bridge. Moreover, archaeology has also suggested that the Clovis were not the first. Sites such as Monte Verde in Chile, dated to around 14,500 years ago, and the human footprints at White Sands, New Mexico, dating between 21,000 and 23,000 years ago, show that people were already present in the Americas long before Clovis culture emerged. So what became of the Anzic remains? After the DNA results showed connection to Native Americans, the remains were repatriated. In 2014, after the genome was published and additional samples were collected, the Anzic child was reburied, returned to the Montana earth not far from where he was found. But his significance remains unrivaled. Today, the Clovis Anzic child remains the only individual ever discovered whose genome represents the Clovis culture, providing an unbroken genetic link to the earliest widespread tradition in North America. His DNA has offered something no other ancient remains on the continent ever have, genetic evidence of who the Clovis really were and how they connect to the living descendants of the first peoples of the Americas. And yet, this may only be the beginning. As technology advances and new sites are uncovered, more ancient remains may reveal more information on the human journey into the Americas. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, you can like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time.